The 2022 NASCAR season was bound to be a big one. With a brand new race car in the works with the next gen, mystery was plentiful, as was the anticipation of what the car would bring. One of the favorite drivers on both the fan and championship front would be that of 2020 champion Chase Elliott. And after teammate Kyle Larson dominated 2021, you could bet that Elliott and his number nine team were motivated to get back atop both the NASCAR ranks as well as Hendrick Motorsports ranks. Of course, it all started at Daytona with the 500, and while they did get a top 10 in that race, it wouldn't define the start of the season for them. Nope. That would come at the Auto Club Speedway, as in the closing laps, Joey Logano and Kyle Larson were battling for a win. Around 20 to go, the number nine was up to third and looking to strike. Who's going to be in the lead right here? Is the caution going to come out? No, we're still green. And Bowman. look at this! Whoa! Oh! I think Chase might have hit the wall there. So it definitely the last hit time we were here two years ago. He Chase Elliott, after going a lap down, turns it around and caution wave. While the Napa Chevy spun and fans were outraged, this didn't blow up into a bigger controversy. The team, while not winning, managed to stay up front and lead laps, in particular 50 at Phoenix and 185 at Martinsville. While losing the handling and having subpar pit calls cost Elliott wins, the team was still atop the point standings from race 5 through the remainder of the regular season. It took until round 11 of the 26 race regular season for Alan Gustafson's led team to break through. For Chase Elliott to become the fourth and final Hendrick driver to visit victory lane this season. Was fastest in practice. Once that nine car got in the lead, proved to be the fastest okay, in the race as well. Kyle Busch led the most laps today, 103. But Chase Elliott and his Hendrick Motorsports Camaro going to lead the last one. Yeah, boys. Out. Check flag. With that, it was official that Chase Elliott would be fighting for a championship in the fall. Now, it was time to prep for the playoffs. While having a slow remainder of May and into June, the finish column at the end of June and all of July solidified Elliott as a title favorite. Chase Elliott down the back stretch for the final time. A huge lead over Kurt Busch, running in second. Looking for his second win of the 2022 season. He'll get it at Nashville Super Speedway. Chase Elliott wins. LaJoy loose behind the nine. Now he goes to the high side. All the way up into the wall goes LaJoy. He's going to spin around. He'll collect the field. Caution will come out, and it looks as though the nine of Chase Elliott is going to be scored the winner. Chase Elliott will join his father as the only Georgia-born driver now. Two of them to win at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Chase Elliott was declared the winner at Pocono after both Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch were disqualified in post-race inspection. The win is Elliott's fourth of the season. While these three wins were impressive, it's what made up the in-between that vaulted Elliott so far out in front of the rest of the playoff grid when it came to favorites. He got a second at Road America between Nashville and Atlanta, and also got a second between the Atlanta win and the Pocono inspection win, meaning that the nine team had five straight finishes of first or second place runs. Five weeks separated them from the entire pack because of this. And over the next five races, they seemed to be a bit of good luck away from two more top two finishes at both the Indianapolis road course and Watkins Glen. Even with a rain-induced crash to end the regular season, though, the number nine team was far and away the championship favorite with 40 playoff points versus the next closest in Joey Logano's 25 playoff points. And then, of course, the playoffs started. And the caution's going to come out. Chase Elliott involved as well as the 14 of Briscoe. We got super free, hit the wall. And a lot of damage. The right rear pointed the wrong direction on Chase Elliott's car. Yeah, that's the toe link broken. Have to 
come to pit road and try to get that repaired. There you see the damage to the front of the 20, uh, the 14 of Chase Briscoe. We already know Larson has had trouble in this race. Here's two more playoff contenders. Elliott and Larson both I would right consider right. to be favorites. Know. So you see the crab walking, the right rear tire pointed to the right. At Kansas, the team put together an okay run with an 11th place finish. And heading to the Bristol Night Race, the nine teams cushion over 13th would be 28 points. Not enough to be overly worried, but not enough to also have any comfort. But with so many mediocre teams in NASCAR's playoffs, there were enough teams faltering along the way that Elliott's runner-up finish in that night would lock him into the round of 12. Now, it was just time to reset and put some good runs up together and get it right. Or not. Out of turn four, Chase Elliott into the wall. You see the fire coming out the right side. And he comes right back in front of the field. the right side here. Yeah, this thing is heavily damaged. He came over the radio talking about a right rear tire issue. So now after the Texas incident, into the round of 12, they were one race in and only four points to the positive heading to Talladega Super Speedway. It could be a dream or it could be a nightmare. In Elliott's case, it was a dream. In stage one, finished third, eight more points. One stage two, so 10 more points. The race, well... With the win, a chaotic end to the Roval race really didn't matter. But with six races into the playoffs having been done, the inconsistency was extremely alarming. This nine team didn't seem like the same one that set NASCAR on fire in the summer. But with four races left, you got what you got. Unfortunately for Elliott, what they got was slow. At Las Vegas Motor Speedway, to open up the round of eight, Elliott's Hooter Chevrolet never broke into the top 10, and rarely even into the top 15. They were just flat out slow and limped home to a 21st place run, sixth of the remaining eight drivers in the playoffs at that point. The gap to the cut line had also shrank from 31 points to 17. At Olmstead, the team started out well enough, getting stage points, but ended up finishing a mediocre 14th. The gap heading into Martinsville? Kind of fittingly, only nine points. The season would be on the line at the Virginia Paperclip. But once again, the nine teams showed up when it truly mattered. Qualifying second, he would remain there for both stages, gaining 18 stage points in total, and really gaining a true advantage over his competition. And with him maintaining a 10th place run at the end of the day, even with the tire strategies all over the place, even a hail melon wouldn't knock the nine team out of the final four. And it would all come down to one race in the desert at the Phoenix Raceway. 312 laps with four drivers fighting for a championship. Joey Logano would run out as the favorite after winning the pole and having an extremely fast car. And as the race ran on, it was apparent that Elliott was no match for him. So in the second stage, while the majority of the field, including Logano, tried to save fuel to finish the stage, Alan Gustafson called him into the pits to try a strategy of using fresh tires to make up ground. While bold, it didn't work, and ultimately kept him mired in the back of the pack, which then led to his demise. Well, made up of two championship four contenders. Wall of the night! Oh, died into the wall on the inside, just brushing it, and the caution comes back out. Look at that steering wheel, Jeff. That steering wheel's not straight. He's got some suspension issues. He made big contact yep. with the wall. Yep. Oh, he just said, yep, when it was asked, big damage. With this, it was over. The season was done. Falling laps off the pace, Elliott would limp home to a sour 28th place finish. And with it, it leaves many to wonder of what this season could have been. It leaves many to wonder what if Chase Elliott had performed better in the playoffs? What if he had carried more momentum into Phoenix and the team was firing on all cylinders? What if, in 2022, Chase Elliott, captured his missing ring.